Good afternoon. My name is Grace Krennican. I'm the general manager at BART, and I'd like to thank you for coming here today. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk to the writers that ride BART. I want you to know that we are working very hard at the table with our unions, trying to get a good deal for the unions and for the system. I know our writers are incredibly anxious about Monday, as are we, um, and we are trying our darndest to make sure that we have an agreement uh, and that we have service on Monday. The real issue that's involved in this negotiation is an issue that's very dear to the writers' hearts, and that is that our system continues to be reliable into the future. So it's not just about the service today, but it's about the service into the future, into the next hundred years, really. Um, we're fighting very hard to make sure that we have a fair package that's balanced, that takes care of what our workers are need, that's fair to them and fair to the region, but allows the investment that the board has taken and made the decisions the board have made to invest in the system and make sure that those decisions are implemented so that we have train service, we have new trains, we have a new train control system, and we have the maintenance facilities to maintain those trains into the future. So as we come back to the table today, I think that the unions are interested in negotiating with us and we are trying to find that right balance. And the last thing I want to say is, even if we don't have a deal struck at midnight on Sunday, there are lots of avenues that can be pursued that don't have to end in a strike. Um, we can continue talking. We don't need to impose. The union doesn't need to strike. And we can continue to serve the Bay Area and our riders uh, together as we work this out. So thank you very much, and I'd be happy to take questions. Grace, what about Thomas Hawk? There was a lot of um, talk yesterday about how, um, how unpleasant his negotiating demeanor was, that there was no negotiating taking place, that they would present proposals or an option, and the responses would be, no, not interested. I know that they came before your board this morning and asked that you pull him out of the equation. Have you done that? Tom Hawk is our negotiator, has been, will be. Um, I don't tell the unions who to hire. Um, they're not telling me who to hire. I think that you'll find he put a proposal on the table yesterday. It was the one he developed with staff to try and break through the medical issue that we have on the table, uh, the, the proposal. Um, he's very dedicated to getting a good outcome for this, always has been. I understand that he was made the issue by some. I think that that was to obfuscate other important issues like salaries. We were far apart, we still are, on salaries. At the time, they were asking for 23 percent, and we were asking for 8 percent. They, for three years, uh, BART for four years. I, I don't think um, that we need to obfuscate. I think we need to get to the table. So the please, over here. BART has brought an outside negotiator in every year. It's a specialized function, and they've had help from outside help every contract they've had. Please. Um, the negotiations are between the unions and BART. Um, again, outside help. I've talked to many uh, outside folks who've called, and I'm happy to take their call, and I appreciate their interest. As expressed to me, their interest is in making sure that the trains are running and that we're talking with the union and that the union is talking with us. They haven't particularly taken sides. They just want a good outcome. I totally understand that interest. Um, but the table is one between the two of us. Uh, there is no extra money in Washington, D.C. for transportation at this point in time. There is no extra money in Sacramento, and that's why the board took the incredibly strong and bold action in February to start making an investment in the capital side of this agency because of the critical nature of where we're at. Our system is 40 years old. We're out of trains. Uh, we've had to order a, new, a, a complete new set of trains. Most transit agencies replace a little bit at a time. We were at the 40-year mark. So the, it was a very gutsy move on the board's part to stand up and use this new fare increase that goes in in February, it goes in in January of this coming year, and dedicate that to 1,000 new trains, to the Hayward Maintenance Center, and to a new train control system. That's, that's what the, the whole thing was about. And um, the parties coming in from the outside can't offer any funding specific to BART's replacement. There are many needs the state has that the state has to take care of, so it's really on us. And that's, that's why the tension right now, I think. 
You had a question, yeah, please. Are you guys getting close to a final best offer? Is that there's something called a last, best, and final offer. Uh, we're at, we've got three days. Now, in negotiator terms, um, three days is a very long time when you've come as far as we have. Uh, we've had many what we call tentative agreements made that are in what we call the supplementals. Um, we've made a lot of progress there. Our union members have taken seriously this, action, this uh, effort. So have we. And I, I know it hasn't been popular to say progress has been made, but it has. It is true that on the generals, the big issues like pension, medical, and wages, uh, we have to discuss it. But we're in the 40-hour work week. But we're, those are issues for the table. They're doing a fine job working on it. They've got all weekend to do it, and they're dedicated. And they have longer if they want. We're making an earnest effort to work with our unions and the workers. They're really great people. I love them. And this is a process that happens every four years. I'm sorry that it's disruptive to the Bay Area, but you know. If it were a party, uh, we'd be calling it something else. It's not. It's negotiation, so it's hard work. How much time are you personally spending uh, at the table or in the negotiations, or have you deferred that to Mr. Brock? Um, I've been working on this every day since for the last couple of weeks. We started on this in January. I'm thoroughly involved in the issues and everything else. The table is set up so that the negotiators negotiate. Um, I come in at the end. That's the way it's been at BART every negotiation that, that, that's, that we've had. So to make an issue of my not sitting at the table, uh, these negotiators have felt me on their shoulder every step of the way. And we're very aware of the moves that have been made and haven't been made on both sides of the table. And I'm sure you've heard um, the, the union leaders who have many negotiations behind them over the years say that this is different uh, in the sense that they uh, that there's just silence, that there's not a back and forth, a Compromise is just sort of a something will lay there for hours, and there won't be any give and take. They say that the, t that the tenor, the tone of this is distinctly different. Um, we wouldn't have dozens of tentative agreements if there wasn't back and forth going on every single day. So I'm I'm sorry for the way they've characterized things. Um, we have a lot of work to do ahead of us, but we wouldn't have those tentative agreement if there hadn't been a lot of back and forth and over how, here. How do you respond Please. to the claims from the unions that you somehow directed and orchestrated uh, Tom Hawk in a union-busting effort? No, nobody's busting any unions. You, we love our workers here at BART. There have been no efforts to bust the unions. We're, we have a tough negotiation. I have a tough negotiator. It's a tough negotiation. Uh, the Bay Area has been in a recession uh, in the past. We're starting to come out of it slowly. I think the workers' expectations when they started into this negotiation was to make up for the past four years, um, and they thought they could make up for the past four years on this contract. It's, it's just not done. They did make uh, some sacrifices in the range of $70 million over the last contract. Uh, and that was partly management, and that was partly labor. We, they cut some money. I wasn't around back then. Um, it was a tough negotiation. But nobody goes backward. Uh, in the case of the state, if there were furloughs or AC transit, if there was a pay cut, what they can do is eliminate the pay, eliminate the pay cut and bring the salary back to where it was. In the case of furloughs, you cannot have the furloughs anymore, but you don't go back and revisit the economics. And I think my workers came to the table expecting to do that. And I don't, I understand it. I, I just can't go backward in time. I have to deal with what's in front of us. And I think that was one of the major disconnects. Please. Chris, can you uh, talk about some charges that the unions made yesterday, saying that BART is secretly <coughs> meeting with the CPUC behind closed doors, trying to get uh, staffs trained in two weeks' time rather than 15 to drive trains in case of a strike? No. We've met with the P CPUC. We meet with them periodically, um, but we're not training scabs. We have managers that are trained to drive trains and can drive trains, and if they're getting their credentials up in some events uh, to make sure that they're current, that may be something that happens in the future. But I think plan A is to get an agreement. Plan B is to get an agreement. Plan C is to keep talking if we don't get an agreement. And I'm hoping that they don't strike and we don't have to impose and, uh, you know, if we're down the road in a month or something and there may be a play at some point in time that involves them, fine. But it's nothing that's on the current playbook, I'll tell you. Um, how long have you Sir? In that case? I, I, I can have Paul answer that question a little bit later on how long it takes. It takes a long time to train a driver and make sure that their, their credentials are solid and ready to drive. We do have some managers that um, can drive trains, obviously, um, but it's not anywhere we're headed right now. 
negotiators. He was at the meeting this morning. I spoke to him again afterwards. He said he's at uh, they. I think it's Bruce Cohen who's working for Bart on the Bruce Conhane. Yeah, he said working with Bruce is fine. There's give and take, and there, that's why there's a progress made on these supplemental issues. But when he meets with uh, Mr. Hawk, there's no give and take. He doesn't listen. He doesn't respond. That's why there's no progress. A little progress. Again, there's a difference between the supplemental table and the general table. The generals are handled last, or they, they're usually the last ones to close, so I'm not surprised one would characterize the supplementals as going easier than the generals. We have tough, tough issues on the generals. I mean, we're far apart on wages, we're far apart on pension, and we're far apart on medical. And so, we, well, um, they get to pick who they have, and I get to pick who I have, and he's a tough negotiator, but he's a fair negotiator, and we're looking for a fair deal. And what's more important, it's what uh, the board and I are both looking for, which is to see if we can't get some resolution here and move on. What outlets Sir? can be used to avoid a strike, and will they be used? The table. Talking at the table. And uh, let me just describe how mediations work. They are not always both parties at the table. The parties can be in one room and uh, other parties in another. In this case, we have two or three unions uh, that are involved. In this case, it's ATU, SEIU, and BART. We all have separate rooms, and the mediator goes in between each of the rooms and talks with folks, and at the mediator's discretion, calls everybody together. This is all, we, we agreed a month ago to put the, um, to agree to the, when we agreed to the extension, to put the mediator in charge of things, so when we meet, what we talk about, that's on the mediator. She defines, she and he define things, and we follow. No going to the governor? Um, I think the job is at the table. Uh, what the governor can do is call a cooling off, and at the cooling off, end of the cooling off period, we still have to reach agreement. Is there any suggestion of contact with the governor? The play is at the table right now. The play is with, with the unions, and they're doing a good job. They're there today. They were there yesterday. We're working together. These are good people. We're working together. Please. Um, the board gave us, gives us a policy perspective, a policy game plan, and we move forward with that. We brought the board together because it's been a month, and we gave them a chance to talk again over where we are. We're right on track. Um, so we got additional, you know, a little bit of additional instructions on different things, but that's all closed session stuff. I really can't speak about what happened there, but it's a good conversation. Please. Question of certification. Uh, are you required in the process of having the management of drivers and controllers getting these certified so that they could be? Uh, I, I can have Paul talk to you about that when, we're, when I'm through here. He can explain whatever's going on in that. The, the, I, I can't emphasize enough that for our riders, that our desire is to have a contract by Monday. So that's plan A. Plan B is the same thing, have a contract. Plan C is to not have a contract and to keep working until we have one. So I think there are a lot of, lot of moves, a lot of steps, and I, we're all at the table trying to get it this weekend. One more question. Uh, you'd have to talk to the union about that. You, you really, you have to talk to them. I, I understand that it's, it's uh, uh, trying to obfuscate and get attention drawn to something else. They, they've got a tough package. They haven't been coming forward and saying their package is 23%. They haven't been saying they don't want to pay anything on pension. They haven't been saying we don't, they don't want to change on medical. Okay? I understand that's not a real popular thing, so trash the other side if you can. It, it, it's just a negotiation. That's the kind of stuff that goes on. I understand it. They came and visited my house. You know, th that's the kind of thing that's done. That's okay. I mean, this we, we've got to. We only do this every four years. Um, I would ask for patience, but I know that our writers have exhibited a lot of patience, and I know the anxiousness that that wells up inside. And I'm sorry for that. Um, but I think we've got a process involved, and I, I respect the folks on the other side. Uh, Tom Hawk respects the folks. The, the negotiating team is not made up of one person. We have about 10 people on our side. They have about 26 on their side. We get together and we work out issues. And they've had to be different tables. The unions have had their own issues getting together. Um, they're overcoming all of those. They've been great partners. We'll get there, okay? So Thank you. Thanks very much. I'll leave.
So there were a couple questions about contingency service. Could uh, anybody repeat what the question was? I can't answer that because we don't have any plans to hire scabs to operate trains. Do you have any sort of a backup plan in case this happens? I mean, it is a possibility. We don't have a backup plan to hire outside people to operate trains. We do have um, managers, non-represented managers, um, some of whom are former train operators who have been certified in the past. We ran trains during the last strike. They just didn't carry people. And we'll do that again. We don't plan to run trains and carry people if there is another strike. And I want to reemphasize the point. I mean, this unfortunately gets us off the main issue, which is that we need to get a deal at the table, and that's what everybody is focused on. We're not focused on retraining people. We're not focused on, you know, planning for uh, revenue service during a strike. That's not what this is about. We're focused on being able to run full service to carry 400,000 people on Monday with our existing employees. Can you identify yourself? My name is Paul Overseer, O-V-E-R-S-I-E-R. -E -E I'm the Assistant General Manager Operations. Sure. Just, just so I understand, could you just clarify what you just said about running, you're running trains during the strike, is that just to kind of check on the system? Yeah. They're called inspection trains. It's to, for everything from keeping the rust off the rail, literally, to uh, just keeping the traction power system exercised, the train control system exercised, the trains themselves exercised. Right. What it, what it does is it, you know, it shortens the time that you need after a strike ends to get back into revenue service. So it, it's essentially making sure that the plant stays in good shape. No. Okay, you can. No. Having said that, are you having your managers get their certifications? Currently? It's already been done. It was done before the last strike. Before, it was before July? Yeah. We ran trains in July. Okay, but, so the managers you have are not now all certified to run trains? The ones that have the appropriate background, yes. But they're not going to be taking passengers, though? No. They're only there to do the maintenance? No. Right. Uh, it's, I don't know the exact number. It's, it's not a huge number. Ballpark? A dozen? Okay. Talked with dozens of people yesterday, and they say that not only are the unions, but BART is holding them hostage and not allowing any trains if there is a strike. What's your response? Uh, I in, would... in essence of holding riders hostage because they don't have a choice. Well, we have 400 train operators, and if they're not here, we're not able to run service, never mind the maintenance personnel, the personnel in the control center. We don't have the capability to operate full service if, they're, if those people aren't there. Well, what about partial service? Because you said that you can run some trains. Why isn't there a discussion about running limited service on the tracks? Right now, we have no plans to, well, again, we run the trains, we just don't run them with passengers on them. Right now, there is no plan to run passenger service in the event of a strike. If that changes, we'll let you know, but that's not in the cards right now. You're part of the negotiating team as well? No. I'm sort of in the background. Um, safety issues have been brought up repeatedly over the last few months. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the big ones. Is You know, safety is um, so integral to our business. In, in that sense, BART is like an airline. If you don't have safety as your top priority every single day, then you cease to exist. So, um, you know, safety is not something that we bargain. It's something that has to be in the DNA of the organization in everything we do. We think it is. The union has raised some issues. We're trying to address those issues. Um, we're not convinced, though, that the answer to those issues belongs in the collective bargaining process. Other questions? They're meeting. They're meeting. They started, what, after, after the closed session. So it's a late morning, noon time, 
I don't know, was it, I think it was, it was pretty late. It was after 12 o'clock. Early afternoon, they're ongoing. Yes. It's really up to the mediators. Uh, a lot of, as Grace said, a lot of the ebb and flow, a lot of who meets with who, do they meet together, is there shuttle diplomacy, that's, the mediators are in charge of this process, and they determine that. The, there are two mediators now. Yes, there are two mediators. There's one from the State Mediation Service and one from the Federal Mediation Service. Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, thank you very much.